This is the Rise to Triumph podcast, and my name is Crystal Torres. I am on a mission to discover the key components of success of today's top TV and film industry professionals. If you are interested in becoming a working TV film professional or intrigued by the journey and are looking to surround yourself with the best industry minds, then this, my friends, is for you. Each week, we will have a chance to listen in on conversations that I have with industry professionals and explore the behind the scenes of what it truly takes to rise to triumph. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of the Rise of Giant podcast. If you missed the other episode that I just put up, uh, it was talking to Eddie Lou about the ABC Diversity Showcase and how he was one of like over 7,000 people that was chosen to be a part of that showcase, his experience, and also just talking about his training, his career trajectory that led him to that point. Uh, today, on uh, this episode, uh, we're going to be talking to Jeremy Luke, a.k.a. Turbo, and Jeremy is just an amazing example of a career, of a long, thriving career that's had a lot of highs and also lows, and how he's kind of maneuvered through the system and found his place and is continuing to find his place in Hollywood. Um, right now he is recurring on the hit series, This Is Us, and, um, yeah, he came out in the last episode, the finale of season one, and you'll be seeing more of him in season two, so congrats on that, Jeremy. And also, he has a series that's streaming right now on Netflix called Small Shots and it's about two guys him and his buddy um, that came from Staten Island and moved to Hollywood and just there basically it's like the real la la land you know like the real ups and downs and rejections of Hollywood and it's a really fast um binge it's only like an hour and a half and it's uh, many episodes and it's hilarious so after listening to Jeremy um, from this conversation you guys definitely please check that out um, he's also done he's been a series regular on Mob City he's um, he was on Don John he played with he was re- neg- um, jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt's uh, best friend in Don John um, he was in Jersey Boy, and he also, and he'll talk about that, he got that from his web series that is now a show that's streaming on Netflix. Um, And through that, he was able to get directed by Clint Eastwood. So how freaking awesome is that? Um, So basically, Jeremy's done it all, been through it all, and he has some really, really amazing advice, words of wisdom, and he's just super humble. So thank you so much, Jeremy. I can't tell you enough how I am very appreciative of you coming on and speaking with us. So yeah, guys, enjoy. And um, yeah, peace. Do you believe in an actor having a big break and stuff? Um, That's a good question. A big break? Yeah. Yeah, I do, actually. Because there are there are things that could happen that you know you could uh, you could catch breaks. I mean, I've caught a break. Uh, it's like you could catch a break which puts you on a map, but I think it's it's the part of catching a break and then sustaining, <laughs> you know, sustaining that that that's that's always the um, that's always the challenge right there. It's just sustaining it because you can catch a break. A lot of people catch breaks, but what they do after they catch the break is, you know, they you got to try to ride the wave, keep that momentum going. 
Yeah. I caught a break. I caught a break with uh, when I was on. I was in the movie Don John. Yes. Was right. like, that was like that was like my big break. Uh huh. Um, and you know, you kind of go from nobody knowing your name to like being the toast of the town. Yeah. Um, so how is that? Because I mean, you've been working in this industry for I don't know. You told me like almost twenty years. <laughs> I've been, uh, yeah, yeah, close. I've been in LA since 2000, since 2000. And I just started getting little jobs here and there around two, like a year later. Yeah. Like 2001. That's, that's, um, that's awesome. And so, I mean, like, so then fast forward, I guess what, that's like 10 years in? Like Don John happened, what, 2010? Um, yeah, Don John was like, it was like 12 years. <laughs> 12 years. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, cause it's, I find that interesting, right? Because I've been out here like a little over three years, and you know, it's like you 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 like you come out here and you're like, yeah, I got this, and you know, it's like people don't realize, you know, even my mom, she's like, you, you're like, you've been doing this for so long now, you know, and it's just like, mom, you yeah. don't understand, like things take time, you know, like you really have to like, I don't know, yeah. so how is that for you, like you know, like that time frame? You know, I I think. To me, like I, I would just always go through ebbs and flows. I remember 2006 was a really good year for me. I mean, I got guest stars. I was working a lot, and then what happened was 2007. I worked like I would usually just work like one or two, you know, uh, like a couple lines here, a couple lines there, TV jobs. Uh huh. Um, so it was always I never really like I always had to work hard, like work really hard to try to get like those jobs and just do I would always be like in class and you know, doing things and just 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 work in the craft, you know, any way I could. Mm -hmm. I would always do plays and stuff like that. So that would keep me occupied in the times that I didn't work. I mean I would still beat myself up a lot, but from two thousand eight to two thousand eleven I couldn't get arrested in this town. Yes, um, I, I I saw that, and I was I totally wanted to know. I mean, because you already and that was a place in time where you're like you already had some TV shows, you know, under your belt, you know, some credits like guest yeah. stars and you know, it's like so. Yeah. Why? Well, why did that happen? Well, it a lot. Well, what happened was the big thing that happened was there was a writer strike out here, which kind oh. of messed everything. That really messed everything up. Got it. But still, even after the writer's strike, I mean, I had I had a lot of problems. But like, you know, the one thing I could say in that desperate time and a time of feeling down and out about myself, and I, I hope I hope if anybody's listening, other actors are listening, there's a lot of good stuff that comes from desperation. You know, there's a lot of good creativity that comes from that. Um, mm. But at the time, I was living with I was living with my friend Joey Russo. Um, and we were just so – Joey's like a New York guy, Italian guy, kind of similar to me. Yeah. Um, but we were living together, and we were just so down and out, you know. We just had nothing going on that we just started making, you know, short stuff together called Turbo and Joey. We started a little show. We didn't map it out. We didn't have any kind of budget. We did it on a video camera. <laughs> um, like in the living room, we started – I mean, we just had nothing going on that, like, this just seemed like, it was just about two actors, and everybody knows there's a lot of stuff with actors, but we were one of the originals to do this. It was just about two guys struggling to make it in Los Angeles. At one time, we had a talk show. I mean, this is like, you know, this is the stuff that comes out of not having anything to do. Yeah. So we had a talk show in the living room. We'd get, like, B-list celebrity, D-list celebrities. We had Ron Jeremy on. Uh-huh. Um, we invited the homeless guy down the block over on no. the <laughs> You know, we just had like a lot of stuff and we just kept making shorts. We 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 started we started working with this guy named Justin Shack and I would just put the shorts out and he he jumped on board and he started directing and writing. He was like really great and um you know, long story short, we made a short film, um, Turbo and Joey short film and it got us both into Jersey Boys. And now, wow. we're, we're, you and know, from was... all this, well, from all that desperation and all that, you know, that pain and stuff, we we, we got uh we have a, we have our shows coming out on Netflix on March thirty first. All right. And it all started from just having nothing, just like being in those dumpy times where there's nothing going on in the business. So just creating our own our own thing, you know. Wow. I think that's really really important to do plays and stuff. I mean, I did a lot of plays, especially. 
you know, I did a lot of Shanley plays. I was always involved in the theater and class. I was always like involved with actors just to be in the mix because mm-hmm. there's nothing worse than just being sitting around doing nothing. You know, I've seen it. I, I've, Me. Hello, put me on hold. Crystal, are you there? Yeah, you put me on hold. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to. I was declining my mother. My mom was calling. Uh, <laughs> I was Sorry. like, oops. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. I could I totally edit that. that. It's not a big deal. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going with this, but I mean, if you, um, I forgot what I was saying. Um. I got a memory like a goldfish. No, no, no. Um, it's okay. Uh, I think I was like saying along the lines of just like being in the mix as an actor, you know, like that's yeah. really important. And I think as far as making it, like, you know, I'm, I'm working now again, um, but I'm always involved in theater. I'm in the theater company. I'm, I'm involved with the theater company. I'm involved in an acting class. You know, I'm involved. I'm in the mix. I do table reads, play, you know, I do what I could. I do yeah. what I could. I'm constantly working on my own stuff. I think that's really important, especially this day and age. Because when there was no like, you didn't have an iPhone. You know, you couldn't do all that stuff that you could do now. You can't make. It's not as accessible to make your. I mean, you had to go to film school to make your own stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, and I think that's. I guess it's interesting, right? It's like the what is it like the phoenix that comes out of the ashes? Like when you're just totally just like. Like you said. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff that comes from being down and out. There's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of life changes. You know, there's like a lot of, you know, because you get to a point, you get to a threshold where something has to be done, where you, what you're doing is not working. So yeah. something's got to be done a lot of times. So that's where, you know, that's where the inspiration for all this stuff comes from. That's and there's something good about struggling, you know? I don't, I don't know. I mean, Ernie, I mean, I've, I've I've seen people, you know. I've had a I've had to work for everything that I've gotten. Yeah. And it took me a long time to get where I'm at right now, and I'm not like famous, or, you know. But I'm working here and there. Hey, um, I mean, but you're would you consider yourself a, a working actor? I I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a work. I'm not a working actor, but you know, it was never it was never handed to me. I've always had to earn it, and it's just. There's something that comes with that, you know, the way you know how to handle where all those 12 years, you know how to handle adversity, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, it's funny because I feel like um, as an actor, right, it's like, I know, like, we all so badly want to work, right? Like, it's not like you don't want to work. You're like, oh, I just want to, like, show that I can, you know, do whatever it is, you know, yeah. book that audition, whatever. <laughs> but it's interesting yeah. that... um. I've looked back at these and in my short period of time and said, you know what? I wasn't ready for that. Or I'm happy that that didn't happen for me, you know? And I don't know if it's the same for you or like you look back on certain things and you're just like, yeah, maybe that wasn't the timing for it. Or this was how now looking back, you're seeing like, oh, this was how my path was supposed to like, I don't know, like. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things that that pain me from the past. <laughs> yeah, back, so it's like know. as much as you want to be like, oh, it's okay, but there are still stuff that you're kind of like. <laughs> there's stuff that, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that burns me in the past. But you know what? Like, like I was, what, what I, like I was trying to say is like, you know, me having to struggle all those years, it taught me. You know, it really did. It taught me like how to face adversity because I had a great 2012, 2013, 2014, not a good 2015, not a good 2016. Mm. So I was prepared to deal with it. You know, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't great. I wasn't happy being back in this situation, not working and, you know, but it, it happened, you know, it, it did, it did happen. So it was really painful to go back. But I was also like, I understand this. I know how to deal with this. And sometimes like people that are younger that make it like real fast and then they don't they don't have to struggle for it afterwards. They have a lot of problems dealing with that. I'm just kind of glad that I dealt with that when I was younger in my 20s. 
Although being in your twenties, having to be in Hollywood, it's like it's really like being in high uh-huh. school again because everybody seems to be doing so great, and you're like, oh my god, like this is terrible. But, yeah. You know? How did so? I mean, you said like you dealt with it. What were like? Do you remember ways or like ways that you do deal with it? You know, like when. So, to be honest, the ways that I the way that I dealt with it a lot I wasn't like a jealous person and I'll, I'll just say this is like you know I've seen people get jealous and bitter and st- I mean it, it's hit me jealousy has hit me obviously it's a human emotion but I never like wallowed in jealousy or getting bitter but that that will ruin you hands down ruin you I've always went inside of myself and just kind of been like well why can't it be me like what's wrong with me like what's wrong with my talents and all that other yeah. stuff you know, so for me dealing with it, a lot of the way that I've dealt with it, I mean, you know, I, I got a gym membership three months after I moved out. Okay. <laughs> um, so that, 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 I got to tell you, like that in itself, just going out, because I, I like to run. So just running every day and being able to do that. So anxiety. But I, I mean, you know, I didn't really know how to do it. I, I would, I would, I would read a lot of books about because I was so, it, you know a lot of times like you're in such a negative space of no 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 so you'd start re- I'd read I've read a lot of self help books about successful people and you know just working mm. are there any any books that, that, that come to mind that you're like that that definitely helped me get through that time or or like that you would recommend to people like if they are in that place yeah I mean I recommend all of Tony Robbins I've been I've been a big fan yeah. of Tony since I was like. 20 years old and you know i know he's like really um now he's becoming a big thing a lot more commercial i know um yeah. but i really rec- recommend it's practical psychology too like how to get yourself out of uh you know how to get yourself out of funks how to put yourself in like a state where you need to be to function um to function you know at, at a good level i i recommend uh zig ziglar i recommend anything that and also like anything that connects to mm-hmm. you you know, I think that that's really important is like being around positivity and seeing, keeping the glass half full, especially out here in L.A. I see so many people just walking around with the glass half empty, like keep the glass mm-hmm. half full because things could change fast and you don't want to be. I remember being like so miserable for so long and then all of a sudden I got a job and I was like, <laughs> yay! you know what I mean? It was like, why, why, why was I miserable wasting all that bullshit time? I left the yeah, curse on you. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, I was like, why am I like, why am I wasting all that time just being a miserable fuck? You know what I mean? Like, like why? And then all of a sudden, I book a job, and it's like, yay! You know, it shouldn't be yeah. like that. It shouldn't be like yeah. that. At all. I love that. Um, yeah. I love that because I mean, at least when I met you in, because you do a showcase. That's how I met you, and what I um, remember from you was just like. You know, like that positivity, you know, like that energy that you just gave out. And I felt like it was very like, I don't know, contagious, yeah. you know, and and I think that because of that, people want to be around you. Right. People want to be like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, Jeremy, you know, it's like. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's like, you know, there's two ways you could do it. You could be miserable. Or you could be, you know, you could. Do it like and 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 enjoy the journey. I, I know it sounds so corny and stuff <laughs> like saying enjoy the journey and it sounds so cliche and shit, but it's so true. Like at some point you got to just embrace the struggle. Like this is what it is. You know these are gonna be at some at some point in your life, these were the days of my life. Yeah. These are the days of like these were the glory days. So enjoy the glory days a little bit more because sometimes you're gonna look back at those miserable days. When you're an old person, be like, those were the glory days, <laughs> <laughs> and you weren't living them like the glory, the glory days, you That's know. That's funny. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, just yeah. I mean, being positive because there's nothing more worse than just somebody who's just you know bitter and miserable. Bitterness just ruins people in this town. Getting bitter, I, oof, that's like that's the worst. When that happens, you're in big, mm, big trouble. Yeah. Because take you out, you know being a hater and all that yeah. kind of stuff and I bet that people take you. like feel that you know and they don't want to be around that 
yeah, you don't want to be around. I mean, I've had friends that have done that kind of stuff to me, and it's like you, you start moving away from those people. It sucks, you know. That kind of stuff happens. Mm. You know, everybody's just trying to do their best. Yeah. If you look at everybody like their children, <laughs> <laughs> it could help you a lot. Like everybody's like everybody's really kids out here, a lot of insecure people. Mm-hmm. So to look through those insecurities and see the good in people. I really like that. You know? Look at people like children. It makes things easier. All right. I love that. That's perfect. Yeah, they just want to be loved. Everybody, everybody wants love. Want, <laughs> will be significant. Yeah, that's, that's the so thing. True. That's the big thing. Um, yeah. Now I want to go, I like to go a little backwards and kind of like get a little bit of a roadmap of how you've gotten here, you know? Like, yeah. So you started in New York. If no one could tell you're from new york <laughs> i started yeah 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 i started um i was promoting nightclubs in new york uh-huh. um i was really stressed out at the time i was like 18 19 years old i was so stressed at the time i was like working it was just crazy like the lifestyle that i led was really uh-huh. kind of nuts um, so i was like really stressed out so like what i'd like to do in my spare time was make movies with like a video camera, just real ridiculous stuff. I was really into like um, B films, like funny B horror movies and like trauma movies yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And I knew I couldn't really take myself seriously as an actor because I didn't have the chops. So I just make like these corny movies. Uh-huh. Like one was about the ma, and it was like, they can't even call the movie. One was about like the mafia versus the Mexicans on the block. <laughs> like it was just crazy, like all this crazy nonsense. And I started like doing that as like an outlet. And I really, really, really kind of loved it. I loved it. It was so much fun. And uh, you know, and then I started. Um, I I went to college, college of Staten Island, community college. And I really didn't like school. I hated school. I went to five high schools. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> Troublemaker, was, or you just was, like couldn't stay in school? I was just like a derelict. Like I was just like high school, and like I was smoking a lot of weed, like doing drugs. <laughs> oh like, my I was god! Just a, you know. I was just out, like I was, I wasn't fighting or anything, but yeah, I was getting kicked out of school and like just not going to class. It just didn't really care about school. Like it didn't seem like my thing. Like I was like, where is this going? Yeah. Um, so even though my mom was pushing, my mom, God bless her, she pushed me through high school. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so I wound up going to college. That was like a joke. I I just kept canceling all my classes, but I'd stick with the acting classes. Those are the ones that I really like. Yeah. And I really, really enjoyed them. And then I had a friend. I had a friend, Jerry Ferrara. You know Jerry Ferrara? Uh, He's, uh, he, was, he was Turtle on Entourage. Oh, okay. Yeah. He, we were in the same acting class together. And he was like, oh, I'm going to do this this thing. I'm going to move to L.A. and do be an actor. And I was like, man, this sounds fucking great. <laughs> so I was like, I'm thinking about it, too. And at the same time, I was like going, I, I didn't want to really promote clubs. I was like, this can't go on for too long. And I knew I couldn't do it in New York because I couldn't struggle in New York. I don't, my ego just wasn't there to have like no money and, you know, be eating shit. <laughs> like what I knew I had to do if I was moving. Got it. Life. Got it. So, yeah. I, and, then, um, and then October of 2000, I moved to L.A. And I was like, let me just, I, I want to really take this seriously. So I, I, I was going to classes in New York. I went to like HB studio, a little bit dabbling, but I was like, I really want to just get into a class and study. And this was, you know, 17 years ago, I, I met this guy named Joe police, who's still my acting coach. Mm. Um, I studied with him for seven years straight. I went to class every week. I did I did, I did scenes every week for, and we were doing big scenes. Right, right now, I'm back in class. It's like kind of different. It's like the scenes are smaller. Like people do like four or five minutes. I mean, we were doing like 15 minute scenes, like big, wow. big scenes. So I, I got, I learned so much. I learned so, so much doing that. I did, I did scenes for three and a half years straight. Every week, I do a scene until I started working, and then I'd slow down, and then. I come back and do scenes and just keep working, you know, just keep working. And I really, 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 I focused in on a lot on comedy because I always loved comedy, yeah. but I wasn't really, I wasn't really able to do comedy because, you know, I had the New York accent. And they always saw you as blah, like blah. a gangster or something. Yeah. Like I was always the guy, like, you know, you've seen my demo reel, I think. Like I was always yeah. the guy like getting arrested and like the, 
the red, what do they call it? The red herring. I was always a red herring on like those those shows, CSI, and uh-huh. all that stuff. Now talk about so, talk about that because you were like stereotyped as like you know that guy. Um, yeah, yeah, I was stereotyped as that guy, so I just went with it. Yeah, you know? like I there really was never like any hard feelings. Like I want to do more. <laughs> no, I've always wanted to do more, and I've always did more. I just, yes, I, I didn't do it on television. Like I always did like real funny comedies and stuff like that with the, in the theater um i that was my thing like i really like to do comedies but i would audition all for dramatic stuff and i would get the dramatic yeah. stuff and i shaved my head so i you know i really played into the whole thing just to just to mm-hmm. work so i shaved my head for three years and um i was pretty like you know i, was, I lost weight i was pretty skinny so my face was like Right now, my face is it sounds so corny, like talking about like how this sounds vain, but my face is more round <laughs> now. But and it works for more for comedy. But when my when I was skinnier, my face was more angular. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I looked a little. My face looked sharper. So, you know, I looked a little bit more evil or whatever. But now I look kind of goofy, like a <laughs> clown or something with my, face, with my fat <laughs> cheeks. So mm-hmm. you know, it, 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 I don't know where I was going with this, but. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I know I know sometimes we get typecast and stereotyped, and I think I've said this to you once, like, stereotyping is not a mm-hmm. bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's better to be stereotyped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In these roles. Yeah. Work. I mean, it's if you want to work. If you want to work, look at and Be stereotyped, and being, and, and, you know, because and I being like a character type is good. Yeah, because it's like. It's good. I mean, I you, you could take a good cue from like somebody like Joe Pesci, who got stereotyped for being like some. You know, I, I look at his career because I'm very similar, like in, um, you know, in stature, mm-hmm. and you know, my my voice, everything, like that that kind of guy. But if you look at his career, I mean, he's done. He played a lot of like you know those those street guys, you know, mafia, mm-hmm. whatever in the beginning but when he he got to do some other thing he got to do some great other things like some you know the comedies that he did home alone and um if you ever saw that movie a lot of you guys haven't seen it it was it was a really good movie with honors he plays like this bum who went to who who was like living around harvard and he did jfk if you if you ever see that movie he played this guy from texas this homosexual guy from texas who was a lunatic Mm. um so if you see some of these roles that he did out of being like the Joe Pesci guy because the the trick is you make your you make your bones playing those roles and then you get something where you can prove yourself that you're not just that character and that's you know that's the that's where you can really take mm-hmm. off. I like that a lot. You know, but that's after you you pay your dues doing the you know doing these these jobs. Yep. You know? Yep. But everybody's gonna do their own thing. You know, that's just that that's my plan. That's like where I'm at. Right no, there. definitely. And then so so then you start working a bit. You're getting a bunch of co-stars, guest stars. Uh, what manager or an agent? Like how did how did how were you able to find representation? Because L.A. I mean, we know like there's a lot of agents, managers. How did you did that help you? Um. Yeah. I mean, I always I I got an agent. I was always really on that kind of thing. Like I was always really, really focused on it. <clears throat> you know, um, I got an agent. I got an agent pretty fast out uh-huh. here. I, I, you know, for me, it's a little bit different because I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a character actor, so it, 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 it's always worked in my favor. But I got an agent out here, and that went good. I mean for a couple of years, I, I, I've had a lot of agents and managers. I mean, I've had like 10 agents, some really good. And I've had about 10, 14 managers or something like that. Some really good, some not so good. I mean, I would give them, I would give them about four months to, to prove themselves and just like get me auditions and stuff like that. And then obviously when I go in, I have to deliver. Um, but I would give them four months and you know, if, 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 you're not going out in four months, like three or four months. I mean, I know people that have been with their agents for two years. I'm like, what? When was the last audition you got? They're like, oh, seven months ago, and you're still there. Why are you there? Well, they're so and so big shot agency. 
I'm like, well, this big shot agency isn't that big shot for you because you're not really doing anything. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, what's the, what's the point of having a big shot agent if they're not, if they're not really pushing mm. for you? You know, I, I was with the big shot agency before I got, um, before I was with Beverly Hecht agency and there was a woman named Nancy Lynn Ward at the Beverly Hecht agency. And she just became an agent like two years and Beverly Hecht is a small agency. Uh-huh. And I got with them because I was with this big shot agency and they weren't doing anything. So I had to take a step back and I got with Beverly Hecht and then she started booking me like, you know, after 2000, 2008, 2011, that was my, my tough times, but she started booking me on some, on some little co-stars my first job that i got after three years was one line of melissa mm. and joey and then by the next year she got me one of the lead roles in don john yeah. so i know people are always talking about what's the best agent and, you know the way that i could describe it is the best agent is somebody who really believes in your talent you know somebody that you can mm-hmm. talk to it's not the name on the door people don't realize it's not the name on the door yeah you know? Yeah. And then, so. And as far as getting agents and stuff, it's, it really is a persistence mm-hmm. thing. It really is like, you have to wake up, you have to treat it like a job. Like once people get that through their heads, like, you know, just because you're an actor doesn't means that you have to work two jobs now. So you have to work five, seven, five to eight hours yep. a day doing this job acting and then you have to go to your other job which is you know bartending or waiting tables so you're doing you're pulling double duty so a lot of people think like ah, oh, well i could just do it you know a little bit it doesn't really work that way and you know unfortunately this isn't a this isn't um this isn't a business where you have a lot of time mm. you know what i mean because you don't there's not you're in a, you're in a pocket of time especially women unfortunately these days and in age i mean things are getting better but it's not like something where you just have that luxury where you could do this forever or you could get in those rooms forever you know your youth is especially you young kids you know the youth is on your side so really take advantage of that and treat it like a business eight hours a day like what are you doing eight hours mm-hmm. a day working out working out that's part of your job you know um emailing agents stopping by agents dropping off your headshot do whatever you know uh rehearsal for for classes like that's part of it like you have to go and work every day and treat it like a business and be disciplined be this disciplined that's really really important because if you're going half ass and you're on vacation in la you're going to try it out and you give it a half ass shot it's like you know why bother you're just wasting your time Mm -hmm. now how do you discipline yourself yeah. How? How do you like personally? I don't know. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I like, I, yeah, like what, what's your personal, I guess, regimen or, you know, you know, what's funny is like, I was much more disciplined when I wasn't, when I wasn't working, when I was really hungry, I was much more, much more disciplined than I am now. Not so much dis- discipline, but driven. I'm driven now. Like when you get down, that's what I was saying. Like when you get down and out, like that's the time to get driven. I just do it. I mean, the thing is like, you can't really like people say, well, what do I do? I was like, I can't, I can give you like little things like to do, but like, I can't really teach you what to do. Like you have to create your own thing. Like ambition, you can't, that's what sucks is like, you can't teach ambition. You know, you can't, you can't teach drive. Like you either have it or Mm -hmm. you don't, you know, if you really love what you do, then and you really love what you do and you want to succeed no matter what, then you find the way, you know, you find those ways to, to make, to work, to make things happen. Definitely. And I, I, you know, I, I see a lot of people doing the same thing. You know, a lot of people do the same thing here. Like everybody's going to do the same thing. Like you have to think outside the box. Like actors are so creative. Yeah. Have so much to offer, but they never like get creative. Actors are scared. That's what sucks too. Is like they're scared, and I I was scared too. Scared yeah. of the agent. Scared and of the I manager. Think... Scared. Of, scared of casting director. No, Go ahead, no, I'm listening. Do you think that maybe the scaredness, or I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, like that fear, <laughs> fear, um, comes from, um, because there's so much out there that's like, oh you the actor should not do this and you can't do this you know it's like there's so then you're like reading into all this stuff that people tell you like 
oh, like, I'm not supposed to, like, you know, cold call agencies or I'm not supposed to, like, you know, reach out to them. I have to, like, wait my turn and stuff like that. Like, do you think that maybe that adds on to why actors are like that? Yeah, I think, yeah, every, yes, yes. I think, like, people, are, I mean, look, everybody's going to have their opinion. Even I'm going to have my opinion right now. You take, you take what you yeah. like from this and you move forward. If you don't like some of it, then don't, don't use it. And that goes, and nobody's word is bond here. Like, nobody, there's no, there's no rules yeah. in this game. There's no big rules. That's the thing is like everybody, one person says you can't do that. That means like, oh, well, I can't do it. You know, if somebody, so with, that's the thing like actors always, if somebody with authority says like, you can't walk into a cast and director's office and do that. <laughs> then the, all of a sudden that person's never walking into a cast, but there's a time and a place. You know what I mean? Like you can't be like a weirdo <laughs> about stuff. You got to be, you know, you got to be like smart about things also. Like you got to be smart. Like, the, you know, as actors, what we do is use our instincts when we're working, but nobody uses the instincts out of mm. work, you know, for the, for the business and stuff like use that stuff. But there's no right way to do things. I'm all about taking risks. What are people going to say? No. Yeah. What are they not going to become fans? At least you took a shot. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? True. I mean, I used to do this thing with my friend. You know, I used to go do the cast and director workshops, but they didn't really work for me like I never really worked for me so I knew it cost like $30 to do a cast and direct a workshop so I, I stopped doing them I mean god bless other people that do that was great but they didn't really work for me like I never really got called in or anything so what I would do I would hear about a role or something like that and I would call my friend Liam up my buddy Liam found and I'd call him up and be like hey Liam um I'm gonna order a pizza right now I gotta go pick it up at Mazzarino's can you I'm gonna drive you to the drop it off to the casting director and I'm going to put a note on the pizza box saying I'd like to read for so-and-so enjoy lunch uh -huh. on me and I put my headshot on there and now you got to be right for something like that but I would do stuff yeah. like that you know what I mean I would do it I didn't care I would yeah. do it yeah you know because that's it's just different it's just why you know I'm putting my money into that to buy them lunch and maybe they'll call me two out of three times they would mm -hmm. call me for the role now when you go in you got to deliver yeah because if not then they really will remember you <laughs> yeah otherwise you're gonna be like a schmuck out of yourself <laughs> so you got to deliver i mean i the first job I, I remember the first job that i got was on judging amy um right before september 11th actually and i knew that rick milligan was casting when i was on the lot for fox and i'm not this is just my this is just like a story i'm not saying go do this or anything yeah, like I, that or, you know, just do what you got to do. But Rick Milliken was casting Sabrina the Teenage Witch wow. at the time. And while I was on wardrobe doing Fox, I knew he was casting this role that I was really right for. It was like um, this guy at a hockey game cursing and screaming at Sabrina. Um, so I went in there. I just walked in. I said, hey, man, I heard you casting this thing. And like, just on a whim, like, I'd love to come in and read for you. I'm just next door. It made myself sound good because I was like, I'm just next door. Judge and Amy, I just got casted. Uh -huh. Oh, who are you? I was like, I'm Jeremy. I just want to, you know, I just figured maybe I could read for this thing. Fucking brought me right in to read, you know? That was like, that was a whim. I was lucky. I, I was pushing the envelope a little bit. But I went to producers for it. I didn't get it. I actually... Um, my friend, my friend PJ got it. it. Was actually the day after September 11th that we weren't producers for it. But you know, I I got that far. It's just you know taking risks. It's not always, but you can't be obnoxious. You can't be a jerk off. You can't like you got to know when to, you know, when to be cool, when to back off and stuff. But I I just don't think like actors are creative in that in that way anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't see much of. It. I see much of like I need to do this. Well and, then and now to... on like go like I you know I've gone to casting workshops and now they now the casting directors are like oh don't bring us gifts don't do the pe you know like that I guess like because so many people have done those things so now like you know like they tell you do that so then so then it's like actors I guess another layer of creativity that they're like don't want you to do yeah yeah I mean you know it just yeah because that stuff is it's just the right time, right? You know, it's just, it's gotta yeah. be right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's gotta be, 
It's got to be right. It can't be corny. It can't be that. De- you can't do this stuff out of desperation either, because if you start doing it out yeah. of desperation, it's gonna look it's gonna look bad. Like it's just gonna look bad. But that's just the you know that's just the that's just the way to do it. I mean, if something's totally right for you and you know what's going down, put it on yeah. tape. And you can't get in, put it on tape. Get into casting some way mm-hmm. somehow. You know, I mean, there's just ways to do things. There's ways to do things. A lot of people in these. A lot of people go after the agents, you know, they'll just go right. I got to get, you know, when they're emailing the agents, I got to go right after, I got to go right after the big agent. I got to get that big agent who runs the company. Well, what about the guy who's answering the phones, the junior agent who's looking, uh, who's been only been doing this for like a year, who's looking to, you know, break out his new star and get his roster Mm. going. You know what I mean? Instead of going for the big guy at the agency who's already got all these clients, why not come up with some? Yeah. That's how I did it with my agent. My agent, I was at an agency uh, 13 years ago. He's the same age as me. He was a junior agent. He used to answer the phones. He got me. They didn't get me. There was all older agents there. I was making YouTube videos before, like, before the YouTube was a thing, like I was on making like silly videos and stuff, but he got what I was doing because he was younger. And now, now, you know, 13 years later, he was a junior agent. He used to get me little auditions here and there. We had a good rapport, which is always a great thing. The rapport is number one, but we had a really good rapport. We had a good time. We had laughs and stuff. And, you know, 13 years Later, he's my agent. He's got me a couple of series regulars. He's still he's my agent wow. now, and he's doing pretty good for himself. You know, wow. that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Now I remember. So you said earlier that um, if you have an agent that hasn't booked you or like hasn't even gotten you an audition in like four months, you know, like you don't think you should be with them. What about the other spectrum where they're like, well, you know, it's better to be represented than to be not. Like I feel like I hear that a lot. Yes. Yes. It's like dating. <laughs> well, it's better as to be with someone. As, you know, Crystal, you know, as soon as you got a boyfriend or something, like, the, you know, everybody's like, what, Crystal, where you been? Like, what's going on? And then you don't have a boyfriend or something. They're like, you don't hear from anybody. It's the same thing. It's the same exact thing with agents. It's like, you know, agents, it's the same thing. Like having an agency... Um, being with somebody, it's a lot easier to get someone. So I don't recommend getting rid. I don't, you know, I don't even know if I should be saying all this stuff. This is like real inside shit. <laughs> I don't really recommend whatever. I don't care. I don't really recommend dropping the person that you're with because if you get if if they get you something, um, then you know you want to you want to be able to go out or if somebody calls you, you want to have some kind of representation already and also it's like you know like that analogy that i just said like you know you have you have you have somebody so it's easy to get someone got it so they already see that you've been represented but how about if then but then they don't see anything on your on your credits so then does it matter if you're represented by them anyway if you're if you no, because it, it seems like you know you're in the mix. Okay. It, it also it seems like you're it seems like you're in the mix. It doesn't seem like you're like Joe. <laughs> but you know, I would always I always tell actors when they get asked by agents and stuff like, when did you come out here? <clears throat> I would say it's got to be the year of your first IMDb credit. So if you really came out in 2003 and your IMDb credits 2008 say 2008 because they're going to say why well, weren't what were you, what have you been doing for 5 oh. years 2003 2008 what have you been doing how come you haven't been working yeah you know what yeah. i mean you've been dicking around you've been dicking uh-huh. around what about people that are like <laughs> you know taking I mean? breaks from the industry don't say that yeah i mean the whole taking a break is you know taking a break is like half a retirement <laughs> when people take breaks like I, I you know i wouldn't say taking a break. <laughs> Maybe there's no taking a break. Like you can't, you can't take a break from work. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the problem. It's like people don't treat it as a job. So it's like they they don't treat it as a job just because they're not getting paid. But how do you take a break from work? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's still work even though you're not getting paid. Yep, that's true. You know. Um. Now, because you've been out here for so long, and you you've seen people that have stuck it out and you've seen people that haven't right like what has 
yeah. what are like the key traits or the or the things that you've noticed that people that have stuck around what they've done or what they are doing people that have stuck around love mm. it that's that's the number one they really love what they do and in some weird way they enjoy it they enjoy the struggle you know that's the thing because if you don't love it then it's gonna come out like if it's just all you know for fame and riches and all that kind of shit like then if you don't love the work it's gonna show and you're just gonna be chasing this thing or you're gonna chase it and it's gonna be ugly yeah. you know so you gotta love what you do that's <laughs> you know that's the thing if you don't love it then why bother and you don't have to be like in love with it because i go through times where i'm just like Ugh, acting like this fucking... <laughs> you know what i mean you have to you don't have to be in love with it all the time it doesn't have to be like oh this is my passion i love acting blah, blah. <laughs> but you gotta love what you do you gotta enjoy it otherwise the wrong reasons and i see so many people coming out here you know, because they watched a lot of episodes of Entourage or something, and they were like, this is, looks great, you know, and then it comes out, and it's like a different story. This is like real life, so you got to be prepared. So love it. And and uh, my teacher, my teacher Joe Polisi, always says, actors act. Mm. So act. Don't be sitting around your house looking for the job. Sometimes people get so obsessed with looking for the job that they forget why they got into it in the first place we hopefully the good reasons is to act because it's fun mm -hmm. you know that kind, of, that kind of stuff but a lot of times people forget about that and it goes into like this other thing it just goes into like the headshot the casting director workshops got to get an agent and they're not even doing what they're not, not even acting they're not even progressing in what they yeah. do yeah yeah so do you say like you have to balance kind of like the that business brain of yours like yes artiste brain absolutely absolutely unfortunately I'm, I'm not bad at the business part i'm pretty good at the business part uh -huh. actually um, i'd like to say i'm okay at the acting thing too <laughs> you know but uh but yeah you gotta you gotta balance it it's a it, it is a balance and then I, the other side of that is i see so many wonderful actors that are so good that that do such great work and I, a lot of my friends like love the stage and I'm like, why aren't these people working? Mm -hmm. Why aren't they like working? And so a lot of times it's because they're just not good at the business or, you know, or they've been overlooked by managers and agents who haven't seen it and can't see the passion behind them and that they're freaking genius. That's what's tough about LA. It's like, there's no rhyme or reason for why one person makes it and why one person yeah. doesn't. So do you say, I mean, I think I read an article where it's like, uh, I don't know. I think it's something about like only 7% of your talent actually goes towards your acting career. What do you think of that? Wait, the t um, like, so, yeah, like you acting. having like an acting career, like only 7% of that has to do with it. With, uh, with talent? Mm -hmm. Like, like it's what they're saying is that it's more. I don't know about seven. I would say I would say a lot more. I don't know. Maybe that's right, but I, I would say a lot more than seven because having a career is like being able to deliver, yeah. even when even when you're going in for those roles that aren't right, and, or even when you're uh, even when you you don't have an agent, it's still being able to deliver on those days, like sending out those emails or headshots or doing what you got to do to get through those doors. Mm -hmm. um, but when you get through those doors, you have to bring the talent because talent wins at the end of the day. There's nobody could deny talent. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, because if you're doing, if you get an opportunity to go in for a really good casting director and you fuck, you, you know, you go in unprepared, you fucking blow it. Usually when you blow it, it's just because you're unprepared. It's not because you had a bad audition or something. Yeah. But when you blow it and stuff like, um, that's talent. So you didn't bring the talent. So you're probably not going to go back to that office in a long, for a long time, mm -hmm. you know? So I think talent has a lot to do with okay. it. But sometimes it doesn't, you know? Some, I mean, I'm, I'm just talking about the long... No, I, no, I agree with you. I was just wondering. Um, yeah, I, I remember reading yeah, 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 this yeah. article. It was like, because... But yeah, like, I agree. It's like, it takes all this work, like, business, you know, to, like, get to that point where you're able to then be in front of these big casting directors but then when you're in that room i mean 
you have to really show up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also the energy, like a lot of people don't see understand that the energy of the whole thing has a lot to do with mm-hmm. it too. Like, you know, getting called in is like doing scenes and, you know, working at it and, you know, like being in the mix and letting people see what you do and, you know, constantly working on stuff. Like that's really, really important. Even though you're not getting paid for it, you know, it's very, very, very important. You want to act a lot of people. If you want to get a job, my secret is do a play. Yeah. Because as soon as you do a play, you start booking jobs. All right. At least I have anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of other people, like the last play I did, everybody booked a job. Wow. <laughs> did you get, Did you like invite like casting directors and stuff to the play or, or, or? Um, yeah, I did. I did. See, I did that. I'm different like that. When I do theater and when I do plays, I don't. I did invite casting people. You know, but they don't really come out as much as they used to, you know, unless you have a great reputation and stuff or you already have a reputation. But I, when I do plays and stuff, like, I do it just because I love to do yes. the theater. You know, I get a kick out of it. I think I think at the end of the day, that's that's really 75 percent should be that. I don't I don't know if it should be about the industry no, I, and yeah. casting director. Because the truth is, they don't really come out as much, you know. They don't. They, it's not like it used to be. Casting directors, agents don't really come to plays as much, you know. Unless you're doing something at a big place, or you know, you have a really special relationship with someone like that. You yeah. Know? No, I. I but I think like do that. I, I've always done that kind of stuff. Like, let me just do this just for me and my friends, and you know, just to do be creative. Mm-hmm. You know. I think so. Yeah. Um. Now let's talk a little bit about. So then, in two thousand eight, when you did have this uh, moment of, I guess, stagnantness going on in your career. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then, like, yeah. you said that the web series then like led to like doors opening for you. Um. I I had yeah. read, or I think you. It was like one of those like facts of where you said something about that you were at a bar and someone like recognized you and that's kind of how you got into the audition for Don John. Is that, am I getting that correct? No, 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 no. Well, it's funny. A couple of things happened. (laughs) Um, There was a guy named Brian who was the first, the first AD for the show was a big fan of Turbo and Joey. Okay. Um, so he was the one he showed I think he showed he was telling Joseph Gordon Levitt about us because Joe was casting Don yeah. John and uh I don't know if Joe saw it but like it, it, it came you know afterwards he saw it it came down the line but really what it was was the casting director for uh Jersey Boys mm. saw Turbo and Joey in, 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 in our last episode that we did, we were chasing, uh, we were trying to get a Joe audition to play for a Scorsese movie. Oh and um, Joey in this thing, we, we did a remake of Casino, the movie Casino, where Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci meet That's in the so desert. Cool. And Joey played Joe Pesci, and I played Robert De Niro, and the cast and director, yeah. Free Mickelot, saw that episode, and he put Joey in the role in Jersey, but well, Clint Eastwood saw Joey, uh-huh. put Joey in the role in Jersey Boys to play, to actually play Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci introduced, introduced uh, the, the band. He put the band together in mm. real life. So Joey played Joe Pesci from them seeing this short film that we did, Turbo and Joey. And then um, I auditioned for Joe Pesci, but Joey got it. So they gave me another role, which was really, really cool. That's so cool. Yeah. And then we did Jersey Shore Shark Attack from Turbo and Joey also because they saw um, the director had us up to play Best Friends. I played, uh, I was playing uh, The Complication and Joey was playing Donnie Diesel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> remember, like, I remember yeah, Jersey yeah, Shore. Yeah. <laughs> so I showed the director, I was, we were both going in for the callbacks. I was like, you know, me and Joey work together. Um, a lot, and I showed him Turbo and Joey, and that right away they were sold. They were like, "All right, we cast both of you." So that was real. It's been a real blessing. That's so cool because I mean, like you said before, you know, like 
now like there's no excuse why you can't be creating your own stuff and like now everyone's doing it now like youtube is like completely saturated you know it's like everyone's doing something yeah um, yeah i mean it's got to be it's got to be good also you know what i mean it's got to be it's got to be when quality. did you know what you were doing and was I good because you said it kind of like came out like accidental like how did you know like oh okay i think we're onto something i made, I made this uh hold on let's see oh my god <laughs> oh my god <clears throat> bless you needs and darn for me i made this uh i made this turbo and joey i had my friend leaf write up this turbo and joey uh audition it was like basically us auditioning for csi and um and i directed it and i just told leaf i said i don't really know how to direct well but i i just want to make this really simple so I kind of was, I just wanted to work within my means and I wanted the, I wanted the script and I wanted the, uh, I wanted the characters to really just take over, to really like push this whole thing mm -hmm. forward. Um, so when we made that, we put it out to just our friend on Facebook and people just thought it was the funniest thing. Like they just like thought it was like hysterical and that's where it started. That's where we knew we were onto something really, really good really special but you know people making their own stuff i always say like work within your means mm -hmm. you know you don't have to have a huge camera to do you can do stuff on your iphone so, yeah no but uh, like a lot of people everyone's doing like youtube or like there's instagram <laughs> stories and now you know it's like people like you are are taking this to the next level getting their web series put on like a bigger platform yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't really go. Look, here's the thing: is like people ask me, like, how did you get? The, how did you do this? It's like, I, you know how I did it. We just had fun. Like me and Joey and Justin, we just had fun. Like we all we did was have a good time, and through that, and we were like, you know what? If people like this, great. If not, okay, whatever. Like we weren't really aiming. We were aiming for people to see this and to bring it on a better platform. But we were just aiming to just have a good time with this. Mm. You know, that was the bottom line. It's just because we weren't, we, me and Joey, there was no joy in acting, you know. There was nothing going on. So we were like, fuck it, let's just have fun and do it for ourselves. And, you know, that's that's really why I do plays. That's really why I do Turbo and Joey is just because it's really fun. Yeah. And that's, you know, and, it, and, it, and it's enjoying. Because if you're enjoying it, there's some good stuff that comes from that. Yep. If you're just making a web series to say, I'm making the web series and I'm doing it, you know what I mean? And we're going to get it on TV and da, 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 da. Then it's like, you know, you got to, those the kind of things you got to watch. Hey, but you really have to enjoy what you're doing and be in love with it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Otherwise you're not doing it for the right reasons. That's my opinion, but. No, I, I think so. Because. Everybody's everybody's got their own opinions with this, and it doesn't mean that it's mine's right, <laughs> you know. No, but I mean, I I think that I think you're right because I mean, if you're just solely focused on like the result, you know, it's like it's right. It's hard for you right. to ever enjoy that journey. So then people will notice that. Right, right, and now I have the time when if you focus on just the result, you're not gonna get the result you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's human. We all do that. We do auditions and stuff like that all the time, too. I know, I know. I'm trying to, like, not do that. Yeah, so then yeah. how did you, how did the web series, because now it's going to come on Netflix, March 31st? Yeah, yeah. That's huge. Like. Yeah, it's big. Whoa. It's, it just happened. It you know, it wasn't, it, we, um I did a movie for Fox Digital three years ago, and I, you know, I uh, I showed the guys at Fox Digital. I was very confident with this this short, uh -huh. um, Turbo and Joey, where we were in a desert. The video, I showed um, I showed one of the execs at Fox Digital. I was like, "This is this this is my baby right here. We should be making this next." And he just loved it. He was laughing his ass off and stuff. He's like, "Bring the whole crew in." So I brought the whole crew into Fox Digital, and here we are. Three and a half years later, and Fox Digital has a spot on Netflix, mm -hmm. so that's how we wound up on Netflix. That's so crazy. So, like, yeah. 
But that's, yeah. I mean, you have to have like a level of confidence. I mean, I guess because you were so proud of it and you knew that it was. Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew it was dope. Like, you, you, there's a level of confidence when you know something's good. Yeah. You know, it's like being invited. Like, if you know a player is going to be great and you have that confidence, yeah. invite people. You know, somebody sent me, uh, if, you, if you know the play or whatever you're making isn't good, like, don't invite people to the play. <laughs> I'm just going to say that because somebody invited me because you got one. It's, that's your reputation right there. Or don't invite people to the to watch the show if it sucks. Yeah. You know, that's your reputation. So unless you're super confident about it, don't <laughs> bring people to see it because that's your rep. Yes. You know, that's all you have out here. So, I mean, that's all I have. It's my reputation, really. Yeah. And you know what, like, what I'm noticing is that even though, like, um, okay, like, you have representation, but it really seems like because of the connections you've made with people, because of the web series that you created that then became, like, something that you really loved, um, I don't know, it's like, yes, you've also, you know, worked on really big shows, like Don John, I mean, not shows, films, like, you know, Don John and Jersey Boys, and now who we're going to see you soon on This Is Us. Um, but it seems like you've also, like, really connected yourself with people. And that's also kind of unfolded in, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, look, I, you know, I never, uh, the one thing about me is I, I, I hate the word networking and stuff. I hate that word. You hate it? Sounds it? So, <laughs> I hate the word There's no word. There's no word that I hate more than networking because it seems ingenuine. Like I've always just does, gone about my does. life making friends. Like if I really like somebody, then I like them. I'm not talking to people. I'm, and it's just so, it's just something that I've always like, I've just, I, I haven't really liked that about Hollywood and to each his own. Like if that's the way that you got to do things, I, I get it, you know, play the game, but I've never done, like, I've never showed up at cocktail parties to, like, meet so-and-so. I just haven't done it. Like, I, I, I just, so, for me, like, I've done things is just pretty genuine. Like, if I like you and I want to work with you and stuff like that, we'll work together, hopefully. You know, if I don't like you, whether you're a celebrity or, you know, some guy off the street, like, we're probably not going to work together. Like, that's just... That's just me. I've always been that way. I've always, like, I never really studied with the teacher who's, you know, the big shot teacher. If you're a good teacher and I like you, I want to study. My, my my teacher, Joe, he's not, like, a big shot, you know, one of the big shot teachers, which are probably, those people are probably great, but, like, I never went to go do what everybody else is doing. I always stuck with my heart mm -hmm. with that kind of stuff, and I've kept it really personal, you know? So I think, like, I've never just been out there like trying to meet people and stuff like that. I even when I showed the guy, um, one of the execs, yeah, of course I thought like it would be great to show this guy and he jumps on board and all that kind of stuff. But I really just showed him out of genuine like this is fucking cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is cool shit. You know? If anything, I'm just showing you what I make and you know I don't know. That's just kind of like where that was. That's always been my take on the whole business is just, you know, do things with people I love. And I, I you know, I, I probably could have made a lot more connections over the years if I, if I, done some of those stuff. But that would have taken my energy away from I, from the stuff that I find important, which is you know, acting, which is the work, which is you know, creating and stuff like that. Because I, you know, I see a lot of people that. There's a lot of people that try to network me, and I see it. I see it 20 miles away. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. You know what I mean? It's so ingenuine. So, but yeah. when you're being genuine, people people feel that. Um, that You know, you really feel that. So th that's just my take on it. Everybody else has their own, their own take on it. But, like, yeah, something to offer. It's good when you have something cool to offer, too, you know? Yeah. I love that. I think that that's just refreshing. It kind of like I just hate the word network. It's such a like, oh, uh, it's such an ingenuine kind of thing. It's and like it you have to like, network, you know. And you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And I think that word is just a shitty word. I, I mean, I, I, I think about things like I, I like to make friends or meet new people or something like that. Yeah. You know, network just kind of seems like we were talking about like the result. Like you're gonna meet this person, so you could be to A, B, C, and D. Like. 
if I meet you and you're cool, like, well, let's hang out. Hopefully something happens. If not, no big deal. You know, at least I just got to meet some new person that I've never met before. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's so refreshing. I feel like it kind of like lifts this weight off me because it's like for me, not being here as long, you know, it's like you, yeah. know, you just get fed all of that. This is what you have to do. You have to network. You have to meet these certain types of people. And if you want to be working in that type of field, that's what you have to do. And then it's like, you know, I've done it. And then I feel dirty. I'm like, I don't, this isn't me. This isn't, this is, doesn't feel genuine, like you said. And mm-hmm. yeah. That's all I could say about that, you know. But, but like I said, that's, that's me. That's, you know, other people do things differently. And it's like, you know, kudos, kudos to you. If you but, make you it know, work, I, yeah. I get it, you know. My thing is kind of trying to, trying to keep it real in this whole fucking crazy world <laughs> that we live in. <laughs> everybody's running the rat race yeah and i love that about you i think that that's oh thank you Mm -hmm. yeah 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 Yeah. and that's just it's just the way i see things Mm -hmm. i love it now um i don't know i think i've covered a lot is there anything that you that maybe i missed or that you want to like i don't know tell somebody about (laughs) yeah like just you know be guy. Just help other people get what they want. Mm. You know what I mean? Like help when you could. If you could help out your friends and stuff, be that person. Don't be don't be a dick. <laughs> don't. You know, I could tell you a quick story that I, I brought my friend Liam on a Taco Bell commercial fifteen years ago. Um, just woke him up and I was like, yo, dude, come to this Taco Bell commercial with me. Because I, I brought him because he was a friend, and I didn't think there was anything that's going to come out of it. You know, I wasn't trying to network. I didn't have any kind of ulterior motives or anything like that. I did it just because he was my friend. He wound up booking the Taco Bell commercial. He made a ton of money. I was like, wow, man, that's great. You know, he, he's a good friend. Cool. Like, it's fucking, it's awesome. Yeah. 15 years later, 13 years later, he calls me about a role. He's like, you're really right for this role. I heard about it. You know, blah, blah, blah. It was Mob City. Oh, you know, it was, uh, it was a series regular on Mob City. You know, called my agents. My agents fucking worked their magic, got me in. You know, that's that's just, you know, th- things like that. Don't expect it, but those things come back to you. Wow. You know what I mean? You're doing that small thing for him, like, it came back to me, you know? So just help people get what they want, you know? Yeah, that's what people in LA don't do. Actors are scumbags like that. They don't help each other. That's what sucks. That's what I I don't like. There's no team. It's just me, 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 me. So it's it's hard. I'm like a team kind of guy. Like I help my friends and stuff like that. You know, I I've, I've had a couple of people like really look out for me and help me. Mm-hmm. Um, go to bat for me. One of those people was Milo Ventimiglia on This Is Us. Like I never, you know, he really went to bat for me. We worked together before but he really went to bat for me to to play this role i mean i had to deliver um with the auditioning and stuff like that but he really went to bat for me he really did so and i didn't expect that i didn't want that you know what i mean it was it was cool it was just unexpected yeah but you know help your friends out if you have those opportunities especially like you know if you have an agent if you go if you were lucky enough to get an agent or something like that like i've always done this like try to you know, try to get one of your friends in there, pay it forward, do that kind of stuff. Cause that's what life's all about. Yeah. Otherwise you're going to be a dick, you know? And you're going to be miserable too. Like I feel like. Yeah. And really do it. Like, you know, really put yourself out there, you know, help. It, it's just, you know, everybody's just trying to do their best, help others, help others. You don't have to be mother Teresa, <laughs> but you know, one, th- one thing a day, two things a day to help somebody else get what they want. Yeah. Guys, I'm just going to let that conversation sit for a minute because after I spoke with Jeremy, I was like, oh my God, I just felt so inspired. I was like, oh, he just gave, gave, gave so much. That conversation was just bomb. Thanks, Jeremy. And if you want to know more about him, uh, you can hit him up at... Jeremy Luke 
Turbo on Twitter. Um, Instagram, you can hit him up at Jeremy Luke 10305. Um, you can also check out his credits and stuff on IMDb at Jeremy Luke. Uh, yeah. So, oh, and guys, hello. If you're not on Netflix already, looking up Small Shots so you can watch it and, you know, give it a five star rating, do so like, like now. And, and yeah, support your fellow artists, support your fellow content creators, support people that are making stuff happen. So I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for listening.